I just want to preface this video by saying uh, thank you guys for having faith in me that I could take a look at something like this objectively. Uh, I was genuinely planning on totally ignoring it, pretending it didn't even exist. Uh, but I've just seen so many comments everywhere, um, Reddit, Discord, and my YouTube especially, saying, you know, they you want me to take a look at it because you think I can be unbiased. I have a hard time feeling I can be unbiased looking at uh, something from these people, but I'll, I'll give it I'll give it an honest go. So, without further ado, I have a corrugated cardboard mailer. From the one, the only, you know who. Um, first thing I want to point out is, yes, I did order a backlight kit. I'm sorry. I did order the parts to backlight a Game Boy Advance. Uh, and this is a corrugated mailer. Um, something I thought was a little funny. Take that how you will. But apparently he sent me a commercial sample plastic parts for joystick. And, um, like, I'm not, I, I don't know what this means, but I don't think that's right. I, <laughs> normally I, I'll unbox things and bring them over to my desk and just, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll go through the box as it arrives and, you know, this, this is how the kit arrives. Packaging's probably not going to be that important, but... The packaging just seems so wrong to me that I thought it was worth mentioning. Between the choice of material and the customs declaration, it just... It, uh, anyway. I can keep going. I'm going to try not to. Um, but seriously, yeah, just corrugated cardboard mailer. Um, I want to quickly flash over to my order and uh, if we look at this here you can see I ordered five things um, I just I wanted to make this as kit like as possible as familiar to uh, my, my typical content you know so I ordered the dust guard I ordered the um, the adapter ribbon oh no that is, yeah, the adapter ribbon. I'm calling it a ribbon, but it's the PCB, the adapter PCB, a 40-pin ribbon for the adapter PCB, the screen itself, and then a ribbon to connect up the buttons um, so that you don't have to run any wires to, like, the LR and select button. I thought it was pretty neat. Uh, fascinating design. It works out to about 65 pounds shipped to the U.S., uh, 66 pounds, which... If I recall correctly, at the time of ordering, it was about 80 USD total. Um, the reason I'm bringing that up is because it is one of the most expensive off offerings out there right now. For comparison, Funny Playing sells, or forgive me, it, it has been a while. I remember when the ITA kit first came out for Game Boy Advance, this was 35 bucks from funny play like that <laughs> you could buy two of these for one of these and uh, just that feels kind of weird um that being said i have spent more on backlight kits if you guys remember uh this one from taobao really like right before the funny playing uh backlight kit ushered in that whole new era um it wasn't a great kit for a multitude of reasons but just saying, I have spent more on a kit. Anyway, moving on. Distracted. I'm trying to change the subject, and that obviously doesn't work when I have a specific video to do. So, when you order those five things, you get these four objects. You get the LCD itself, the adapter board, the ribbon, and then the little gasket mesh here. Uh, now, full disclosure, I did already open this and test it, and that's exactly how I knew I had one item missing. And now, the problem with that is, if I do my normal process, do the video, uh, and contact the vendor about my item missing, unless they did that to literally everyone, 
Uh, I'm going to blow my cover. Now, I might, may or may not already have, uh, but if it were me and I were knowingly shipping a kit to one of my biggest uh, critics, I would, first of all, not ship it in a cardboard mailer. Uh, but second of all, I would include all the items he ordered, unless he did that specifically so he could try and trap me. It's like, haha! Now I'm not gonna tell you you missed it because now it's it's a lose lose. Either way, I'm disappointed that how they shipped it, and I'm disappointed how uh, they what they included. Um, I have no doubt in my mind that if I contact them and uh, request another ribbon because they just didn't ship me one, um, I'm sure it wouldn't be a problem. Like, it's, it's really not that big of a deal. Things happen in logistics all the time. Sometimes items get dropped, whatever. If the vendor makes, the retailer makes up for it, they, sell, they send you another one, no cost, no argument, just, oh yeah, our bad. Here's your tracking number for the new one. It's like, whatever, who, who cares, shit happens. Um, but it's just that, plus the cardboard mailer, plus the fact that I had to piecemeal this thing together. They don't offer a kit, which is weird, but sure. Uh, I guarantee you there are going to be tons of people who only buy this part and then they get their 35 pound backlight kit and they go, well, where's the rest of the backlight kit? There isn't the rest of the backlight kit because it's not a kit. Uh, everything else comes as a kit except for this. Um, anyway, moving on, aside from my um, awful retail experience, let's now take a look at the actual hardware itself and... Um, to try and separate that out. One of the things I noticed, because of course I did watch his video on it, was that this PCB seemed really thin uh, to the point where it was flexing as he was handling it, trying to install it, and like that, that kept rubbing me the wrong way. It was, it was bothering me for some reason, and I couldn't figure it out. Uh, and then I had the epiphany that a lot of other backlight cables uh, adapters just come on flex ribbons, so what does it matter? And here we are. This is probably the best compromise between a very thin PCB and something rigid enough that you don't have to worry about the extra um, processes that involve adding a stiffener to a PCB because that's an extra manufacturing cost which makes it more expensive, blah blah blah. Good compromise, that's what I'm saying. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a choice. It's a decent one. I'm having a hard time calling it a good choice. Um, I know the uh, thicker IPS kits from like one chip tend to have a thicker PCB or at least it feels less warped um, I don't know enough about the PCB anyway let us go ahead and get this thing started to assemble so that connects in there that wraps around like that and then This connects here. So the screen goes pins down on the PCB. We don't want to put pressure on the screen, so we flip that over. We shouldn't handle it by the ribbon, but I've been assured that it is reinforced and should not get damaged. That goes pins up. All right. Hold that down. Oh wait, no, I have that backwards, I'm sorry. I was wondering why that seemed backwards, because it was backwards. Shut up. All right, there we go. And you can add a little bit of tape if you want this thing to not move, but I highly recommend not doing that for uh, two reasons. One, uh, it's gonna make the install a little bit awkward if you get that lined up and then you're trying to get this ribbon in place because your PCB is like slightly over too far and it needs to be over this way. This ribbon's not gonna bend that way. Don't don't tape this down until you have this at least lined up and then you can like press the tape down. Uh, two, if you need to solder to yours, the uh, solder pins are right here. Nice, easy to access, nice, convenient. But uh, you don't wanna solder while it's physically on top of the LCD because that can you can soak the heat through the screen and damage the backlight layers, uh, the backlight diffusion layers, 
and it'll cause you problems and it's gonna ruin your screen and you're gonna be disappointed because these things are like $20 because of course he had custom LCDs made. Um, I suspect this LCD is physically similar to uh, not the quote unquote drop-in kits from like uh, one chip in Cloud Game Store, uh, but there's like, there's a very similar panel to that. I wanna say almost the panel used in this thing, but I don't think, I'm pretty sure it's not. Um, it, regardless, they put a custom ribbon cable on the glass itself. They went to the LCD manufacturer, had custom LCDs made with their spec ribbon, else, you know, how else would they get their name and logo on there? So, I think it's, uh, I think it's pretty neat. Um, there's, there's a reason why it's so expensive is what is the point I'm trying to make. Um, now, is that a good thing? It, I guess it depends on how this thing actually performs. Um, from what I've seen, it looks pretty good. And from what I know about the designer, uh, for one, they're one of the only, if not the only native English speaker making backlight kits, which means communicating requests for specific features uh, or uh, feedback otherwise is very easy. You don't have to go through an, auto, an AI translator and hope that something doesn't get lost in translation. You can just tell him exactly what it, what it is. If he asks you for more detail, you just send him a wiki, Wikipedia link and, you know, he either tells you it's stupid and bugger off or he goes, oh yeah, that's a pretty good idea. Let's see if we can add that. And <laughs> anyway, moving on. Uh, I think we got to start building this thing at some point. We're going to start with a bare Game Boy Advance motherboard that I definitely tested and definitely did not just pull out of this dirty GBA uh, and then slap it on the desk. And then our shell of choice here is going to be something brand new from a completely different manufacturer because I don't like the shells they make and I really like the shells they make. So, you know, I think I think we can make it work out. Um, so, if what I hear about this kit is correct, it should fit in this shell way better than it would ever fit in the shell that it was made for. Why do I say that? Because I don't have a bracket to align this thing. I just have a bare screen and a little sticky gasket. And this just seats in here. Oh, but we have two options. It's, it's pretty well located left and right, but up and down, it's a little bit loosey-goosey. So I think what I'm gonna do, oh, I bet I could just eyeball it. I bet that would be fine. Um, <clears throat> but look at that, it just, it just drops right in, no bracket required. Uh, the shells that this company makes uh, have this whole area just totally cut out and you're supposed to use a bracket to hold things in place. Uh, one, one point to them, all right, I'll give you this. Um, the fact that they have no guesswork involved with installing that, if you buy the bracket, all right, fine. Uh, but the whole reason the spacing is done that way is so that it's compatible with OEM shells and this thing is also supposed to be compatible with a lot of uh, OEM uh, interesting, interesting way to do that. I, don't know, I think that hard step is a little bit weird looking for transparent, but sure. Um, anyway, sorry, totally distracted. Uh, ADHD moment. Um, completely lost my train of thought too. Oh well, it's designed for OEM. One of the things with OEM shells and I always say this about the no-cut kits, is yes, technically you could just shove it in there, but there's these ridges on OEM um, housings that you'll want to trim off, otherwise the screen will sit at an angle and it just flat out won't look good. So yeah, it's, it's almost, you know, it's not great. But you still, if you trim, you result in a much better experience. This, however, should be 
actually drop in and not trim. Uh, we are going to go ahead and do the uh, wiring though, because there are zero settings, nothing to configure without it. There's no touch sensors, which it would be nice to have other solder free options, but as someone who can solder, it's certainly not a deal breaker. In fact, when I solder up the controls, I tend not to like the touch sensor. I am, I'm doing an awful lot of rambling. I'm so sorry, guys. Let's go ahead and uh, move a little bit further. I'm going to omit the, um, the gas. Well, actually, I don't think I even need to because one side is not sticky, just the other side. So we can, oh wait, no, I don't want to peel that out yet. I'll peel that off, but not that. We want to leave it attached. And the reason we leave it attached is so that we can come in here nice and proper lined up and not stuck to the totally wrong spot because it's not paying enough attention. There we go. I'm not too worried about the alignment here because it should mostly be hidden. Uh, use this to really, oh, well, I could just pop that out. Hang on. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm thinking out loud a lot here. I don't usually do that, but here we are. I'm going to drop that in, drop that in. The buttons in here. <clears throat> Ooh, we should do power usage tests. Yeah, okay, sorry, it's not gonna be this quick. Uh, I'll get the buttons in here first just so I don't make a total mess of things. And I know I've gotta do it off screen for something else, so it wouldn't cost me an extra time to do this one too, but... Is that 40 pin? That looks 40 pin. Might as well treat it like every other kit, don't you think? <sighs> One of these days I'm gonna actually play the game. I swear it. Set that aside, we won't need, need it. Or actually, you could probably set it on the back for um, a nice, comfy place to look at. I don't, I don't know. I'm just making stuff up, sorry. I'm gonna get out the power supply. Uh, I do have this, if you're curious about what power supply this is, I have it linked in the description. It's, um, it is very convenient for testing Game Boys, but it is very strictly not at all, definitely not required because you just drop the Game Boy in the rear housing and then use the batteries and it's fine. The only reason I'm doing this is because I want a specific number so that I can compare <clears throat> before and afterwards, uh, you know, what, what kind of power usage does this thing have? Oop keep hitting the power switch. Oh, that's not reading my game. I want to see what kind of power usage this thing has, because if it's total, utter garbage, um, you know, what? what's the point of the kit if you can only use it for like two hours on a pair of double A's or something? I've never seen a GBA kit that bad, but 
Okay, see, I told you I didn't test this thing. Let me go find another GBA. Ta-da! See, all I needed to do was clean the cart slot. I should have had more faith. Well, it's clean now. And my cleaning process is... I'll link it below, but it's literally just toothbrush isopropyl going in there and get it cleaned out. Um, when you have it open, it's nice and easy. Anyway, same place I always test. Overworld, Pokemon Emerald, exact same cart as always, 2.4 volts. This console pulls. Ah, that's interesting. Okay, let me stop messing with it. 2.4 volts, this console pulls 1.24 to... I'm sorry, 1.24. Uh, 0.123 to 0.129 amps, which is, uh, what, 123 to 129 milliamps. Um, that's a little high, just a little bit, uh, but it's within our margin for error, so we should be fine. And at this point, I should plug in my clean screen here and um, test to make sure that it works. But you'll have to believe me when I say I did test it off screen and it was working. So if it doesn't work now, it is my own fault from handling it. Um, so this is, this is me giving you permission to skip testing your kits only if you have literally already tested them and in no other opportunity uh, in no other um don't do it just do your kits oh yeah, yeah, yeah i wanted to do the the wiring i totally forgot all right i am going to just solder on top of that Okay, so I think I shall use my Kynar wire. Let me find it. All right, so this is totally weird. I, I got distracted looking for my Kynar wire and I couldn't find it. And then I found this bag of little pre-cut and pre-tinned wires that are in the exact gauge I was looking for. Totally forgot I had these things. Super convenient, right? I would have never bought them intentionally, but because of who I am as a person, of course I have them. All right. So uh, the kit wants you to solder to right, left, and select. We are going to use, is it TP2? I'm pretty sure that's select. I've changed my philosophy on soldering to the legs of the button. While it is easier to solder to the button itself, uh, we want TP8. Yeah, while it is easier to solder to the button itself, um, it puts the wire on the wrong side of the board and routing can be kind of weird. So, I mean, just use the test points. Um, unless you're planning on using like one of those Intec uh, consoleizers, if those things ever actually come out, and if they're not total hot garbage, um, you'll want to have not soldered to these test points before, but worst case scenario, you can probably clean it up and it'll probably be fine. Uh, anyway, we can do, we can get creative with the routing if we want. Uh, by doing some like old-school console modder hacks cheap tricks 
and that is routing the wires under the legs of the PCB or the CPU, excuse me. Um, and that makes the wiring somewhat clean. Run select through here as well. The problem with doing this, if we can get that one through, one of the problems with doing this. is that uh, I want to finish routing this one and then I'll finish my thought okay one of the problems with this is you're gonna fold this down and then the wires are right there anyway so you're you're routing them up and then back down you, you don't have to you could just route them straight there uh, but this is one way to pick up the slack if you want to do that uh, and then I will put this one through here. And then they're both coming through that same little hole there. Oop, put that a little tight. And so this is R. I suppose we can just solder it right now. There's no reason to wait. So this kit does, one of the options is this big ribbon cable that you just solder to these three points in particular and then it routes up and then there's this big long plug that you plug in right there. Um, that is one of the parts my kit did not come with, unfortunately. And it is actually kind of a bummer because I had forgotten how annoying it can be to um, strip wire and get all, get all this cable managed and I don't know, sometimes it's nice to just literally zip, zip, zip and then you're done. I totally get it. I think the PCB is is pretty clever too, uh, that ribbon cable, because um, by itself a ribbon cable like that would probably be pretty expensive because when you buy a PCB it doesn't matter if it's a line doing this, you pay for this the square area of, you know, the square footage of that specific shape. Uh, basically in a rectangle. Oh, these should be... Ah, uh, okay. I'm sorry. I had it upside down. We want to sire these waters. Why there's uh, these wires facing up so that things are nice and tidy when we close it up. This one is our... I need to pull the slack in a little bit. R, which makes this one L. Why would I solder the middle one last? Okay. And that should be it for the soldering. Sorry, I don't mean to walk through things this slowly. I'm just trying to be methodical. Also, I'm tired, but I, 
I'm too anxious to go to bed without doing this. Um, I'm using my own buttons because, I don't know, I had an idea and I had to try it. I had to see it, see if it works. I'm still not sure yet. Um, but these shells do come with buttons and I gotta say they're perfectly fine. They're perfectly serviceable. I don't really like the texture. I don't like what's going on. Uh, but I also don't really like stock button colors, so they're totally, totally benign to me. Ooh. Light pipe. Don't forget light pipe. I would actually like to try out one of their new um, speakers too. Cloud Game Store just launched a bunch of new speakers. It could be pretty neat to check out. They come in a bunch of different colors. I think for this build that might that might be pretty neat. So the saying, as it were, if you used to uh, stick around, hang around in the hobby, was that the aftermarket screws are garbage and never use them. But really, I think that was misconstrued. Uh, I don't think the aftermarket screws were ever garbage. I think it was just that people were using the wrong screwdrivers. Uh, in the case of aftermarket shells, you do generally want to use the screws that come with them because in some cases the screw holes are a little bit shorter and they come with shorter screws uh, to compensate. But if you use the wrong screws, you know, you use the long one by accident, well then you just ruined your nice new shell. Also, it's plastic. You don't need to go ham on it. Uh, it just needs to be snug. And then my preferred method, and I have yet to crack a screw post since I've done this, in a new shell, mind you. <laughs> in older worn shells, all bets are off. Um, tighten it, Tighten it down fully. And then as soon as it's like snug, back it off an eighth of a turn and then pull the screwdriver out. Easy. Done. Boom. All right. So now that I have that assembled enough to continue testing, let us do exactly that. Uh, no further ado, because technically we don't need to continue assembling to get to the, to get to the kit, to test the kit out. All right, whatever, it's shown 2.4 now. Oh, but is it set? There we go. And if we turn it on, it just works. How convenient. Ho, 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 ho. Holy crap, are you kidding me? That is a lot. All right, so I was half joking at the beginning when I said that. I didn't realize it would actually be. Holy cow. This is just at the default brightness. Uh, so this kit at 2.4 volts. Oh, let's get it in the overworld where it usually is. Volume's all the way up. The colors are muted. The pixel grid is on. I don't know if any of this affects the battery life yet, but if it does, at the default, this thing pulls... Wow, 2.4 volts, what are we, 545 to 537 milliamps? That is an insane increase. Oh my god. Oh, I gotta hit both shoulder buttons. Ah, oh, that's not even the highest brightness. <laughs> I 
at the highest brightness, it just powers off. What is up with that? Oh, wait, you know what? Hang on, that, that might not be totally fair. My finger might have hit the power switch. All right, all right. I wasn't paying enough attention. I'm sorry. That's no fun. If that's a problem, that's one thing, but if it's me being an idiot, that's something else entirely. Oh. No, that, that wasn't me. It just straight powers off. Holy crap, you're kidding me. Okay. All right, let, let me try one more thing and then we're gonna switch to a higher voltage and hopefully mitigate that problem. I can explain why it's doing that. I know exactly what's going on uh, and it is a problem, yeah. Um, and it is not a problem that they can work around that I know of unless one of those extra golden pads was an auxiliary power input and you can wire straight into the um, batteries. And if so, then it's probably fine. All right, so apparently you exit the menu by just letting it time out. At the minimum brightness level, it is a much more reasonable, but darn near impossible to see, 205 to 208 milliamps, which is less than double the power usage. However, if we crank that up, it's it's kind of a problem. Uh, I'd say oop, that's about the bare minimum as far as brightness goes, what's usable. Uh, at 2.4 volts, it is pulling, what was that, 287 to 279 milliamps? It's just, it's a, it's a lot. Uh, other kits are brighter in that same power envelope. This is... Ooh, that is not great. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. We'll get over it. All right. Before... Actually, no, yeah. Let's try... No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because that's the default. So if you don't solder, that's what you're stuck with. Uh, if you do solder, then you can turn off other options. Uh, and if you do solder, then obviously you'd be... Um able to change the options. I don't expect the pixel grid to affect the power usage, and it doesn't appear to. The screen alignment almost definitely doesn't, but true motion, I bet if we turn that off we might see... Oh no, we don't. We don't even see a difference in power usage. Interesting. I wonder how he's doing that specific algorithm. We'll we'll go over what specifically that is in a second. Uh, I just wanted to see how it affected power. And now that I have my information, we can continue with the install. Oh wait, no. One more thing. I want to do. Come on. I hate the quick sets. You have to hit both buttons at precisely the same time. Uh, okay, I set the power supply to 3 volts now instead of 2.4, which is equivalent to a full set of alkaline battery, a little under the full set, but we can set it to maximum brightness, and you can see at 3 volts it is pulling 505 to 509, 510 milliamps, which is a lot. That is, that's, that's a lot. Uh, oop. Comparatively, at no brightness and 2 volts, it is pulling 151 to 157 milliamps. I'm going to set this back to... Oops. I'll set it to about 65%-ish, whatever that is, because that was the default, and then we'll go from there. Uh, but from this point forward, I am going to put the power supply away. We are done with it. bring that up. Holy cow, I'm sorry, that was sticker shock at that. At that, um, at those, uh, those numbers. Uh, I am going to use this mirror lens because I have to on this clear shell. 
It just, I need to. So this is one of the newer glass lenses from the same manufacturer that makes this shell. I think they make the best lenses, bar none. But also, if you are building a Game Boy in a Game Boy Advance housing, and the manufacturer of said housing also makes lenses, you should mix and match them. because. You probably never paid any attention to this, but this lens shape is very complicated and replicating that is difficult. And every manufacturer has a slightly different shape lens, which makes compatibility kind of difficult. Uh, but if you use a matching one, oh, I hope that's on the outside, good. Um, all of the gaps will be nice and nice and tight. And that's what we want. All right. It's funny, I just did one of the shortest backlight videos I've ever done, and this is shaping up to be one of the longest. I'm trying to be unbiased, I'm trying to cover everything, and it means I'm moving slow. Pull that out, because... Peel that off. And then I'm going to line it up with the top of the shell and hope it stays in place. Oh, but before I do that, oh, that's awkward. It's kind of difficult to open. Uh, I want to check and make sure all of my wires, or rather, none of my wires are getting pinched. Unfortunately, one of them is. So in this shell, both the wires on this side are fine, but on this side, this wire gets pinched right under the screen. And I think, since I have a clear shell, the easiest way to fix that is to mark where the wire goes. Note, this is on the film. And if I come back around, lift that clear, I can see exactly where that mark is. And I can come back in here with some flush cutters. And pull out just a little bit of plastic. So that my wire no longer gets pinched when we assemble it. How about that? I should clean that up though because that cut looks horrifying. Give me just a second. Just cut off the white bits with a nice sharp knife. And we should be able to slip this back together. So I don't know if this is just for testing, but one of the pads on here is five volt, five VIN, which I'm guessing it's for testing. I know the Game Boy Advance, um, one of the voltage rails that connects up to the LCD connector here is the five volt rail. So it's possible that's how this thing is powered. It's just powered off that five volt rail. It would make sense. I believe that's how all the other kits are powered. Um, why would this one be any different? So that's probably how he's testing these. He's probably just got like a bed of nails he pops on these things. Hits the programming jig, or hits the programming ports. Hits uh, his debug pins, whatever they do, if they do anything. Do -do -do. Get that in there, there we go. I'm getting distracted and forgetting to back these off my eighth turn. It's also helpful when uh, 
screwing into screw holes that already have threads, uh, you should always back the screw off like a, just keep running it in a full circle backwards until it like clicks into the threads. That way you don't cross thread it. You get way more life out of the threads if you pay attention and do that right. All right, shielding, we only need two screws, but I'm gonna go with all four because guess how many it comes with. <clears throat> now in the case of these shielding screws you probably don't have to back them out an eighth of a turn because they should never be coming out again but safe and sorry I guess ah Don't forget the light pipe, don't forget start and select. I suppose I should just jump to uh, reassembly. I was just about to cut back and say, there's no pitfalls from here, don't worry about it. It's fine, it's easy. Um, so, quick review. Uh, those three motherboard sh screws should have been short screws. Those four shielding screws, you could have just used two, it's fine, uh, should have also been short screws. And this battery compartment screw should have been a short screw. What I was left with was a long screw. Uh, because this is a transparent shell, I could just see where the screw post ends and then threaded the screw up to that. And you can see there is still a lot of shell to go. So, um... Definitely pay attention to that. I didn't ruin my shell, I don't think, but had I kept going, I would have. I am going to install a short screw from another shell. And hopefully that is short enough. Oh, luckily the thread pitch matches. And it is short enough. Yep, we're good. So, yeah, do pay attention to that. Uh, it would be unfortunate to ruin the shell. Um, I'm not gonna, I'm, this is the sticker it comes with. It's pretty nice, uh, this shell at least. The kit didn't come with anything. Kit does not come with a lens, by the way. I had to buy my own. Uh, but like I said, matching shell with the lens. I matched the manufacturer. Um, I'm not gonna use this label. It's a nice label. I just have something different in mind. Uh, if you are planning on using one of those battery mods, uh, like the little rechargeable doodad majiggers, these things, uh, make sure you leave the battery terminal out. But if you're using one of these Cloud Game Store shells in particular, you're probably not using one of those because this shell has all of the OEM battery guide holder thingies. So it's probably better to just slip that in there, I think. Uh, okay. For some reason the tab is bent the wrong way, but that's easy enough. Just push that out. Drop that in. Ooh, maybe I pushed it out a little bit too far. Oop. It's supposed to click, not slide and scrape. Well, I don't like how that fits in. Oh, I think it just cracked something. That's unfortunate. Well, it's in now. It's not going anywhere either. 
All right, we're going to load up the trusty Thunderbolt Magnums. Reason being, I know this is a high power usage kit and I set some nickel metal hydride batteries out just in case. Uh, now, why the Thunderbolt Magnums and not the Ikea Lottas, you might ask? Because uh, I have no idea where the Ikea Lottas were and the Thunderbolts were on my charger. Um, these are freshly charged, so we should be above the minimum voltage threshold for this thing, but... Alright, I'm actually, I'm actually really happy with how that came out aesthetically. Uh, one unfortunate thing is I did physically place the screen... Oh, but it looks like it shifted down. That is one downside, I guess, of that. Um, not using an adhesive gasket, but using that. I wonder if we can cheese it. And just slide the screen up. I got it a little bit. And that helps, but if you tilt it up or down, you still see that white edge of the LCD. I don't really like it, but it is what it is. Um, it looks like when you're installing it, just place it all the way towards the top and it should be good to go. So the alignment is off. Let's fix that since I have everything wired up. Why don't we? You can align it left or right, and it was just a hair too far that way, uh, but it's easy enough to adjust, and now it is nice and centered. So. Let us run through, actually, one thing first. Good lord, that's very clicky. I don't like how the shoulder buttons feel in this shell. I tried it out and I think it just works with the better with the shoulder buttons it comes with, uh, rather than funny playing, but I mean, I like the look of the funny playing one so much better. I had to. Um, okay. I want to set it to max brightness. Surprisingly, I still have a green power light, but um, like I said, freshly charged batteries, so I don't know. Cool. So it's still working and on nickel metal hydride. That might change as these batteries get a little bit depleted. So I'm gonna try and run through my array of tests with this thing on max brightness with these batteries. And then we're gonna try rebooting it later on a flash cart and see if it, if it, if it has trouble with that. Because I feel like this is going to be a pretty common setup. People using their Game Boy with a backlight kit cranked up. Um, flash cart, this isn't a flash cart, but we'll be trying on a flash cart, and then rechargeable batteries. Like, that's, it seems like a reasonable setup. It's what I would use. Um, anyway, let us move on to the most power demanding GBA flash cart I have, the Easy Flash Omega. And Freshly charged batteries at full brightness when the flash cart boots, the power light goes off. Oh. That's gnarly. Okay, let me kill the desk lighting. And you can see what I mean. Alright, so my clock has died in this thing. Unfortunately, it needs a new battery. We'll fix that eventually. I, I know I have a video on them. I just don't have the batteries. Uh, let's boot. We'll just boot Pokemon Emerald. 
Let's see what happens to the uh, power LED while well, that's booting. Oh, not bad. I am impressed. Wow, already red. I promise I cleaned this power switch. That was the first thing I did. That's nuts. Uh, what was I looking for? We want the test ROMs. Hey, console test. 240MP. That's what we want. Oh, now we're back to green. Maybe I just didn't do a good enough job cleaning it. Ah, oh, so many maybes. Okay, um, what do we want to look at? Here's the color bars. Ooh, here's an interesting test. Here's the color bars on the normal mode, on black and white, on the DMG mode, which, sure. It's funny how many more steps there are in real color mode than there are in the two fil filter modes. And then, hell, even in the um, authentic color mode, whatever you want to call it, I don't know how well that's coming out, but you can see as the camera tries to refocus on that, oh man, went away. The difference between the uh, accuracies of the color modes. And to be fair, okay, it comes with the default set to how it would look on an actual Game Boy Advance. So there's a story behind this, the original Game Boy Advance screen, and we're talking that th this one, the one that's literally right on my desk in front of me, without the internal lighting, the the actual like color depth that this thing can produce is fine, but because there's no internal lighting, it's very dark. Now, other screens without internal lighting aren't nearly as bad most of the time, but something about this particular screen makes it especially dark compared to something like, I don't know, a Game Boy Color screen. You can just see uh, the neutral color is lighter on that. This is a lighter gray and this is a darker gray. Just yeah, they're, they're dark screens. So because they are dark screens and because they are not internally lit, which certainly does not help with the color accuracy, um, that ends up giving you quite muted colors. Uh, and that's what this color filter intends to do. So we're on the um, like real color mode, which is just sending colors exactly as the GBA sends them to the screen. Whereas if we switch to this mode, it's sort of emulating how the original screen would have performed with specific colors. Now, the reason it's the default is because if you were to compare this thing side by side in original GBA in optimal lighting, it should look a little bit more accurate to the original screen. I can't do that. I just don't have the optimal lighting to compare one. Um, It'll be Glare City no matter what I do. It's it's something you'll, you'll have to do like in person, you know, take it outside and just enjoy it. Plus it's also like almost midnight and yeah. Uh, anyway, you can see how, I didn't know it made a test noise. Um, you can see how muted it is between the two options. There are two, two lines of uh, thought on this, and for the most part, it, yeah, I get where both are coming from. The grid, you see nothing is cut off. You can see a little bit of the screen. Uh, this is supposed to be a stock size lens. Uh, I guess I would have liked it to be a little bit smaller. Um, one thing that might help would be putting the LCD physically closer to the lens. That way you won't get that, like with, with how far away the glass is from the LCD, you know, it's, it's pretty easy to see the edges of the LCD. I don't like that. I don't think it looks good. It is what it is though. Linearity, yeah, it's nice and square. That's good. Uh... Shadow Sprite. So this is the interesting one. This is this is the test. So I always break this test out and we talk about it. And the more I learn about it, the more I have to say about it. Uh, but what this is, 
this is how the original Game Boy achieved transparency. Um, I don't know if the Game Boy, well, I don't think the Game Boy Color does, but I don't know if the Game Boy Advance supports proper transparency or if developers just use the same trick that they always used on the older consoles. But either way, because the pixel response time of the original screens was so abysmal, uh, and because the original Game Boy didn't support transparency and devs wanted a way to support transparency, uh, like, for example, if you're immortal or you're a ghost or something, you know, whatever you're playing, uh, they would just flicker the sprite on and off real quick. And because of the abysmal pixel response time, that resulted in a pretty neat and even transparency effect. Uh, right now I have the quote-unquote true motion enabled in this kit which is the default and you see that it, it's perfect like it's transparent there's absolutely no flickering whatsoever everything is everything's great if we bring up the OSD and change the true motion to off you can see now we get flickering I mean I don't know how how well it's coming through on camera. I can certainly see it in person, uh, but trust me, there's flickering. But interestingly, this screen does seem to perform better than some of the other kits. I'm gonna switch that back to the normal cursor there. And um, I don't know, just, just let it sit there for a minute because some of the other screens would, um, like if you let something flicker in place a little bit too long, uh, you'd get artifacts, you'd get some temporary screen burn in. I want to see if that happens with this kit. So if I move that over, do I still have a flickering object there? No, I don't. Which means this kit's performing better than most. Uh, but you probably... There is probably a reason to turn that off. Um, it probably results in extra screen, uh, extra input lag because theoretically it has to buffer an extra frame so that it can average the motion between the two frames and give you that effect. Um, I don't really think an extra frame of lag is like, I, I don't want to say it's not a big deal because it's like such it's so not a big deal that I don't even want to acknowledge it by comparing it and saying it's not a big deal. Look at how dim that light is now. That is getting absurd. Uh, okay, let's try a few more tests I want to do. Uh, but while we're talking about this true motion thing, I am going to swap over to a single ROM cart for Game Boy, and we're going to quickly demo the game ZAS. Z-A-S. Uh, the reason being, because it is the perfect litmus test for this specific feature, uh, in that pretty much no other kit can handle this game properly. But if we play this, I mean it looks fine. You saw, you saw there was a little bit of flickering there, but that's programmed in. That's not intended to be uh, transparent. That's just intended to be um, flickering, you know, so you notice it. One thing I would like to draw attention to is the background. Like, it looks pretty decent, right? It's a good-looking background. The devs for this game uh, figured out a neat little trick they could do. They figured they could overlay two layers, run them past each other, and make them transparent so that they don't interfere with each other, and it gives you this really neat depth to the effect. Uh, well, we're gonna pause the game, put the OSD back up, and go over to True Motion and turn that off, and now look at how much is flickering. Like, I don't know how, you, how well that's coming out on camera, I always say this, and then it always turns out just fine, uh, and you see what I see. For some reason, the refresh rate of the preview is like half that of what it's actually recording. Don't ask, I don't know, but either way you get quite a lot of flicker. So yeah, in theory, there's probably slightly less lag, but if you really can tell the difference between, uh, I think on average it was like eight frames of lag. Don't quote me on that. 
So if you can tell the difference between like eight and nine frames of lag, good on you. But I don't believe you. <laughs> anyway. So yeah, let's turn that back on. I don't see any reason to leave it off. And there we go. Looks pretty good. All right, a few more tests. So now we're going to run the screen reset test. And I'm going to use my Easy Flash Junior for that. I'm seeing quite a lot of flickering of the backlight. My power LED is flickering quite significantly and darn near off. All right, so same spiel as usual. Whenever the S hits the left-hand side of the screen, it issues a LCD reset command, and um, basically it drops the frame. So when the uh, when the screen is working normally, it'll fill the top row of pixels, come down, and then do the second row of pixels, come down, and then do the third row of pixels, all the way down until it fills the whole screen. And all of that happens about 60 times every second. When a screen LCD, when an LCD reset command is sent, if the screen is drawing right about here, instead of finishing that frame, it starts over back here with the next frame. Um, so, earlier backlight kits handled that extremely poor poorly by, you know, dropping a, up to like 60 frames, which is a second of gameplay. In games like Pokemon Pinball, that can be game breaking. Uh, in games like Pokemon Yellow, where it issues a LCD reset command on an encounter start, you know, it's, who cares? You don't even notice it. You probably won't even see it uh, because it, there's a load screen there anyway. Sneak those kind of things in there. Um, here, it's performing perfectly fine. Yeah, it's dropping a frame, uh, but that is intentional. That is a stress test that this specific kit is doing to try and induce bad behavior with this thing, and I don't see a single problem. It's working perfectly fine. So let us do... Did I already do all the tests in here? I think I did. Uh, let's, let's pull up Legend of Zelda just for grins. That is flickering an awful lot on load. That was also the wrong Legend of Zelda. We might be able to... Yeah, I think we're going to be... Oh, no, we're not. Because... Oh, no, it's fine anyway. This isn't the save I wanted, but uh, you can still see uh, the exact same chain chomp um, with that uh, leash that I usually show. And I usually use that to demonstrate the um, transparency effect. And you can see this kit's struggling with it a little bit more than it did the synthetic test, which leads me to believe that it's doing little more than just averaging the frames. Uh, which does explain why the power usage didn't seem to change when I turned that feature off. Um, if it were using like a, a smart algorithm to decode the, um, the specific moving pixels and only average those uh, to make sure that the background never blurs, blah, 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 then yeah, it would affect the power usage turning that off. But it didn't, and by the fact that I can see it flickering now, I can tell that that's exactly what was going on. And we can go over into true motion and oh, I'm an idiot. It was just switched off. <laughs> That's me talking out my ass, isn't it? All right, so I don't know. Looks like I have more reading to figure out exactly how that specific feature works. Um, my understanding was it was just a uh, average of the frame data, but Apparently that doesn't work. I need to play with it a little more. I used to be, um, one of my hobbies before I got into Game Boy stuff was I did a lot of video encoding and, uh, interlaced footage is the bane of those who use progressive displays and, um, well, one of the workarounds to poor de interlacing algorithms was to just average the frames together. And it ended up blurring the footage quite significantly in some cases, but in other cases it worked pretty well. So 
I don't know. There might have been like a specific combination of things. I don't know. I'm getting distracted. This is a long-winded way to say it's a feature I've wanted for a very long time and I'm very glad that it's implemented. There. You happy? The analog pocket was actually the first device that I know of to enter... enter... to implement... Jesus. <laughs> to implement such a feature. And, uh, you know, I, ever since... It was implemented on there. I've been trying to tell all the backlight or yeah, all the backlight kit makers like, hey, see that feature? Do that. I want that. Um, and now there's another thing that this kit does, and that's the color filter. I've been playing with it on just to try and get used to it. Uh, try and get it. I could have just popped an emerald. I don't know why I didn't. Um, I've been playing with it on to try and get used to it, to try and get a feel for it. And, like, yeah, I can tell that it's on because all of my colors are, are, are weirdly muted. I'm used to them being so oversaturated and this isn't at all the area I want to be in because that's not my Easy Flash Omega Definitive Edition with my updated save. So I'll just use the actual cart. Um, no, I'm just used to the colors being so oversaturated and blown out and... I'm not trying to say that was a bad thing. It never was. Um, it was just different. And for some reason, people didn't like different. They wanted a backlit screen. But they wanted it to look like it always did. Here I am trying to look for Game Boy and I'm grabbing batteries and it already has batteries in it. All right. So I've got two Game Boys here. One of them is built with Funny Playing's backlight kit based off of that 9380 LCD, um, what I tend to call my favorite backlight kit, because uh, the clock's not dead, it's just that late. I had to do a double take. Um, funny playing screen, funny playing housing. Everything's good, okay. Let's fly to the same area. And we'll compare these kits a little. Uh, this new kit is obviously a little bit higher brightness. Oh no, and I thought I had brightness controls wired up on this thing. What a nightmare. Oh, I do. No? How'd it get darker then? It's one of these buttons. Just hold both. Oh, I think it's just the shoulder button kind of sucks. That's annoying. Anyway. They're both set to max brightness. You tell me which one looks brighter. Uh, now you go ahead and look at my spreadsheet and tell me... <laughs> tell me what's going on. Um, slightly less fair because this one has the lithium batteries, but we're trying to run a test. Uh, so obviously it looks misleading that this one has a green LED and this one has a red LED. Disregard that. I'm sure this one would be green if I had these batteries inserted, but I don't. Um, do I even have a set of those batteries around? No. I think the other set's still in my charger. Anyway, compare the colors. What do you think? All right. Now I'm going to turn the color profile over to the unfiltered mode, which is how the screen looks. And even unfiltered, I can look at this and go, this one is still way more saturated. It just is. I am going to set the brightness down to a more reasonable level so that, there we go. Really? Both these shoulder buttons just suck. That's such a disappointment, man. I guess I never really tried this thing out as much as I should have. And the GBA I built doesn't even have working shoulder buttons. Or is it the start and select? Oh, it's the start and select. That's nuts. Okay. Uh, 
uh, I guess they get down to about the same level of brightness. I called this, about this, the lowest level I'd call usable, but I had all my lighting on. I'm sorry. We'll call that. We'll, we'll leave it there. That's a good comparison. So yeah, side by side, 9380 is still quite a bit more oversaturated, especially with the color filter disabled. If we enable it, it's even more stark difference. I don't know. It's a personal preference. There is no right answer here. I personally like this one. It is what it is. I like having this option. I want this level of oversaturation with the ability to turn it into this. I think best of both worlds, right? If we have color palettes, why can't we do that? Instead, we get stuck with these companies giving us these like eight different palettes that you'll never ever use because why would you want everything just tinted pink or blue? Like, I, I'm sure there's a very specific niche where that works, and I have a feeling it's just an Instagram picture. But whatever, it is what it is. Um, hell, these side by side, this one almost looks black and white at a glance. Let us, we're gonna try this thing. I'm gonna bring up the 240p test suite and we're gonna compare color swatches on these two, just as a uh, calibration, I guess. Uh, I don't even know if it's on here, I hope it is. Test, oh, of course it is, because I was just in there. more lights lessen the glare a little bit but you still have my face casting the glare um, there's only so much I can do let me turn my desk lights on will that help that kind of helps I don't know gotta accept it it is what it is all right I don't know. One day I'm going to actually do something with this data, but I'm capturing it so that I have it. I've never seen a kit fail those tests, but hey. Interestingly, the whites are different colors. This one's a little bit more of a cool blue. enough of that one. Now let us get the calibration cube, the stock AGS 101 console. This is definitively what people say is the definitive color experience or whatever because it is a stock Game Boy console but it's also backlit so it's easier to calibrate. Uh, one thing, ooh, Oopsie doodle. I can say these are two totally different colors in person. This third bar, this third swatch is very, very like baby blue, whereas here it's kind of like seafoam green. That's weird. Uh, same thing with that one right there. This is like a lightish red, whereas this is like a maroon. does the A button do? Does something. A toggle setup NTSC or NTSC J PAL. I don't think that does anything on Game Boy Advance. I mean it clearly does something because I can see it changing. You can see it looks slightly darker and then slight I don't know. Try not to hit the A button. 
Um, this looks like a nice bright yellow. This looks like a brownish. I don't know. That's not to say that this one is the Golden Master. This one is probably more accurate, like I said, to the original screen, not to this. This console is known for being uh, really oversaturated in some games. I think Golden Sun is one of the common examples given, uh, just due to how the colors were intentionally adjusted by the developers to try and overcompensate for the original Game Boy Advance's screen. Which means on an original Game Boy Advance, it's actually one of the few decent looking games, but on an AGS 101, it's blown the hell out. And then on one of the uh, funny playing backlight kits, it's even worse. But that's one game. One game that I don't play. <laughs> um, I don't know. It is what it is. I hope that is helpful data. I can't, I can't tell you what colors look like. I can describe and I can compare, but I don't have a, a feasible way of calibrating my phone and then calibrating the video and then calibrating your screen. I just, I don't. We, we, we work with what we got and uh, I try and give you a constant that you might be able to compare your own colors to. Let's say, for some reason you have your own AGS 101 console calibrated, calibrate my footage to that standard and adjust from there. Sure. That might work, except that every AGS 101 is probably slightly different. My phone keeps starting to slip out of the holder. It's weird. Um, yeah. No, oh, that's... It is what it is. All right, let's move on. I am going to crank the brightness. I'm going to leave it on the color filter mode. I'm going to try it out. I'm I'm going to I'm going to give it a genuine try and see how much I hate it or dislike it. Uh or excuse me, like it or dislike it. I was going to say hate it or love it and then I changed my mind midway through. Um That's interesting. I'm going to turn that off. Yeah, that is very interesting. So in fast moving things like this text, whenever I switch menus, that true motion feature, when that's on, that blurs the text and smudges it quite significantly. So yeah, on games with very fast action, you know, you're moving across the screen, zigzagging back and forth, it is gonna cause additional um, Ghosting isn't the right word, but I guess it's ghosting. Artificial ghosting. So keep that in mind, I guess. It's nice to be able to turn it on and off. I think, personally, I'm just going to leave it on. It's a nice feature to have, like I said. So I don't know. I always do these videos, and it's basically like a first look. Obviously, I haven't done an in-depth review uh, I haven't spent time with this Jesus thing for however long, whatever you want to call it. I literally just got the thing, unboxed it, installed it in a GBA, and here we are. I wanted to test and see if it would fail to boot games if I used nickel metal hydride batteries and ran it at full brightness. and. Look, my power LED is basically gone. This is a problem. This thing uses way too much power. And now, I know, I know, I'm just, I'm going to argue in advance. I know there are going to be several of you who are sitting there and going, well, Mako, yeah, it uses a lot of power. But have you considered the solution to that problem? I thought I had one handy, I'm sorry, but bear with me, I'm getting it, I'm getting it. Have you considered the solution to that problem? Is another product they make? Yes, I have considered the solution to their problem is another product they make. It's funny when a company creates a problem and then sells you a solution to it. 
That doesn't that doesn't feel good, does it? Um I don't want to cut up the shell to even try one of those things, but I know exactly what's going to happen. And if I plug that thing in, the voltage is going to zoot high enough that uh, any sag from the extreme power draw of this thing is going to be not noticeable. Uh, in fact, it's probably going to work really well um, for all of four hours until the battery dies. If that, if it lasts that long. Uh... No, it's not good. These, these batteries, I've tested them, not these ones in particular, but the Ikea Lottas in specific have more power contained within them than something like this. This thing, on average, with the Funny Playing Kit at default brightness, I think I measured just under 10 hours, or about 10 hours on average, whereas with the Ikea Lottas, I measured like just under 11 hours on average. Mind you, default brightness again, uh, not max. Um, and yeah, I, I, I proved that by running them on the exact same Game Boy. And there was a whole thing, their numbers didn't make sense. Uh, we even had to repair the Jesus thing because it was having uh, problems with self-discharge. Regardless, this thing will not make your battery life last any longer. But, in the case of this specific kit, it will probably boost the voltage high enough so that you have a working battery indicator, right? Uh, as these batteries get a little bit lower in power, I expect to have more issues with this console. I expect it to like start restarting on me, power off, blah, 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 blah. Um, like, I'm already seeing flickering with the backlight. It's really not good. Like I, at this point I'm like trying to stall for time and, and see see how long this thing actually lasts. Um, I don't think it's gonna be I don't think it's gonna be long but then again maybe it will be. Uh, so at this point I think I'm just gonna start wrapping up. I'll make a note of it and then I'll unpause the video and we'll come back and, and and discuss it, and if for some reason today is tomorrow, well then it lasted longer than I anticipated. Um, so, let's go into some closing thoughts then. I'll try and wrap up here, and maybe it'll, it'll act up for me as I'm summarizing my initial impression here. So, first impression, obviously is garbage. Um, I have had horrible experiences with the store and the person behind the store like just in general they're absurd and that's a discussion for another time i don't really want to get into it it is a problem there is a subreddit thread that details the broad strokes of um why i don't support this person but whatever time for time enough for a different for a different discussion. Anyway, going in, I was already um, apprehensive. And then they shipped the Jesus thing, the screen, in this little wimpy green plastic bubble wrap bag in a corrugated mailer. And, like, it, it'd be one thing if the corrugated mailer was just going from, like, one state over uh, California to Arizona or something, but no. I'm in Arizona. I ordered this kit. It shipped from the UK, overseas. They shipped it international in there. That was such a boneheaded move. I saw someone complain about it on Reddit, and of course, the owner of the store chimed in. He says, wow, I instructed them specifically never to do this. I can't believe that happened. I'm so sorry. Um, the Reddit thread, of course, their screen was broken because that's what happens when you ship a screen like that. I got lucky. Mine wasn't broken, but I got, but I got lucky in a different way because my order was missing items. Like, come on, that's already like three strikes, and I haven't even started the build. Um, next complaint: this there is no kit. I like the backlight kits for Game Boy Advance because they're kits. Generally, when you buy them, they come with everything you need, and you just need to bring your own 
Game Boy Advance. In this particular case, you needed to buy the screen, the adapter board, and the ribbon. Bare minimum, you need all three of those parts, that is three separate transactions. To bring the kit up to parity with other kits and what they come with, which isn't necessarily an argument in favor of kits, is just a point that I'm trying to make, um, because if you only order the parts you need, in theory it should be cheaper for you. But uh, logistics doesn't always make that cheaper if you have what? There are five items. Five times four is 20, times three is 60, times two, 120. You get what I'm, you get what I'm getting at? There are 120 different permutations. I guess that doesn't matter specifically so much because obviously the same specific items, it's irrelevant of the order and I'm forgetting the math to do that offhand. But it's more than one versus one kit is one skew that you have to stock. So it, it doesn't necessarily make it cheaper because what you save in logistics you can make up for in including extra things. So yeah, I don't like that you have to piecemeal this thing together. Um, I think it's silly. I think it's going to result in a lot of people not buying specifically what they need, especially because it's they sell you either a 32-pin or a 40-pin ribbon. I bought a 40-pin ribbon because 32-pin wasn't an option at the time. They were out of stock. I don't know if that was permanent or what, um, you know, maybe I just bought it at a raw, at a bad time, whatever. I had to get 40 pin, which meant I had to go find a GBA that fit, fit it. But either way, I, I just, I don't like it. I don't like it. Um, so you've also got to get, so what I said, you got the screen, the converter board and the ribbon cable to connect it. And then you can also get, and I mean, it's only a few dollars. If you're already spending like 80 bucks on the backlight kit, make your life easier. Get the little ribbon that connects up to the buttons. Uh, and then the screen gasket, pass, hard pass. There's almost no point. Um, I think if you genuinely want one of these kits to install, uh, find someone selling the regular sticky gaskets like these things, except for GBA and use one of these, or make your own out of like bare 300 LSE tape or something, um, this stuff, the good stuff, and just drop it in. It'll be a better experience because A, it'll put the screen closer to the lens, and it'll look a little bit better uh, because this foam does have some, uh, some thickness to it, so it is putting the screen a little bit further away than double-sided adhesive would. It's not too bad, but every little bit matters, I think. Um, also the alignment. That's not great. I don't, I don't like that I can only hold it at one very particular angle and if I'm like two degrees askew, it's the difference between not seeing any of the screen borders and then seeing that horrifying white border. I suppose a workaround when it was open would have been to mask off that section of the screen. Uh, just wait, that'll be the sixth item you need to order with your backlight kit. Um, I don't like it. I think it's a waste of money, and I think it's a waste of time. But the problem with me saying that is that's not 100% true. There are a lot of things I do like about this kit. Um, for instance, for more advanced users, uh, the piecemeal does work a little bit better because if you know you're not going to use the gasket, you don't have to bother buying one and then throwing it out when you get it. If you know you're only installing in 40-pin Game Boys, you can only get the 40-pin version and then you don't have to have that 32-pin that you just keep in your junk drawer because you feel bad about throwing it out in case you ever need it, but you realistically won't, so you're going to hang on to it anyway. Sorry if I just attacked half of you. Um... I really like the quote-unquote true motion, which is really just motion blending, or uh, frame blending, uh, to try and even out the flickering. I really like that. I wish 
I wish the other backlight kit manufacturers would include that feature. It is not something I would ever use, but it is, I think, crucial to properly replacing the original screen. And I don't think I would ever use it because the specific games I play have no benefit from having it on. And that's just how it is. I'm sorry, I don't, I just don't typically play games with transparent sprites. Sorry, it is what it is. It'll help with some of those games like the Famicom classics that have the really glitchy clouds and Super Mario Brothers or whatever. They all have this weird um, shifting screen effect where um, like they squash down the original 180 vertical to the 160 that the Game Boy Advance has. Uh, but because of how they squashed it, it kind of shimmers a little and that results in some artifacts because some of the screens don't handle that shimmering very well. This should help with that. In fact, we should try it. I should go find one of those cards. I don't know where they are. I have one for this specific purpose. I'll go find it. It's come up several times and I've said it each time, but there's another game cart I have in the yellow casing that I like a little bit better for this specific test, but this one should do it. Or not. Really? Come on. Go! Alright, so I guess we're not doing that. That's unfortunate. I'm sorry. I didn't realize my game was broken. Let me, uh, let me see if I can find it. In the meantime, look at this totally suspiciously similar but totally different Game Boy and pretend that's that um was I talking about the true motion or the color filter I think I was talking about the true motion uh so I guess let me talk about the color filter I like the color filter that's all I got um my favorite my favorite thing about the color filter is not that I, not that it is um, a feature, but that it is an optional feature. I like being able to enable it and turn to turn it on and turn it off, depending on what specifically I'm doing. Uh, the reason for that, I have been clicking up and down trying to figure out what the hell I was looking for. It's not even on that card. It's on this one. <sighs> it's always on the wrong one. Um, I like it because, uh, like I was mentioning with the Golden Sun thing, it's it's not a problem with every game. It's just a problem with some games, and some games look better with it on. Um, so as far as color filters go, that is the only one that I think is worth bothering with. Every other color filter, like there's there's no there's no point to it. It doesn't add any actual functionality. Um, maybe the black and white one. I don't, I can't think of a, a single instance where that works. And I don't have the Super Famicom Classics on here. I'm sorry, guys. Or maybe I do. Crikey. No, that's not it. I don't have them on here because they're like one of the few games that don't play well with flash carts. And, um, well, if you can't run them, it doesn't make sense to have them, I guess. Yeah, they're not on there. Sorry about that. We'll have to save that test for another time. But no, I, I really like the color feed filter. I think it's nice nice to be able to... It, it's a fantastic option. Um, if I had to choose between the color filter on permanently or funny playing's, you know, like oversaturated general look of their screen, I prefer the funny playing one. Like I said, it's the specific games that I play I think look better oversaturated. And since I'm primarily playing this specific game... Uh, and Advance Wars. There are like two games I play. Deal with it. Um, 
I think it looks good. I think they both look really good oversaturated compared to um, the alternatives. Uh, so, gosh, that was a long tangent. I totally forgot that I was trying to sum things up. So that being said, I like the kit. I think it's a step in the right direction. I don't think it's worth the price. I didn't get the 80 some odd bucks that it costs getting it shipped to you. I don't think it's worth it. And like, I'll, I'll come out and say it. I have four GVAs here with four totally different kits on them. And I hit the hard power off because I didn't think I would use it. The ITA kit. If you want something that looks, you know, that like looks authentic, quote unquote, you know, that's, if that's what you want, if that's the phrase in your mind, you're thinking you want a GBA kit, you want it to look as authentic as possible, go to Funny Playing, buy their ITA kit, and be done with it. It's literally half the price, a fraction of the power usage, um, and overall a much better experience. The screen alignment is much easier to do. Uh, you could just buy a Funny Playing shell for it, and Funny Playing makes fantastic shells, fantastic buttons. I'm really, really happy with basically everything that Funny Playing has made for the GBA. Uh, I think they peaked. I think they've got some new stuff coming out pretty soon uh, that I think is going to be interesting because I, I didn't know that there was a way to top their existing GBA stuff and yet they found something. Um, I'll share more on that later. But genuinely, if the choice is between these two kits, the Funny Playing ITA and this clean screen, as it were. ITA is hands down the better choice. Um, I suppose it would only be fair to compare the colors on them, yeah? I know it's on here. It's probably in one, su one of the subfolders. Test, yeah. The color profile of this is significantly less muted than the 9380s. Uh, there is also like built in some ghosting because this is using an original Nintendo screen and so the pixel response is just not as good as some of the IPS screens. You can kind of see that with the, the smearing as this switches back and forth. Uh, if we go to the shadow sprite test, um, of course, there's still a little bit of flickering, but it still performs stupid well, and there's no, there's no, um, like, options to turn on and off. This is just, they found a screen that naturally performs in a similar manner, manner to how the original GBA screen performed, except that this one looks good, and it's backlit, and it's cheap, and it's the right size, and... Everything just so happened to line up. Um, let's look at the color options. And I'm fairly certain this is with the color mode. Yeah. And this is with the color filter on to make it look more authentic. Oop, I'm gonna kill that light. Oop, and I suppose, I'll just bring the brightness of this one up. You can more clearly see the steps defined on this one. Oop. That is a very easy button to press. Uh, again, this third option, this blue on the new screen, it looks like this kind of seafoam green, whereas on this screen it looks blue. Basically the same as the AGS-101. So. If 
authenticity and nostalgia to you is AGS 101, then obviously this is the better, the, the better choice. There's just no two ways about it. Um, there are no pixel grid options for this screen because it does not use any scaling options. It is running at one to one. There's no integer scaling, but there's also no uh, like bilinear scaling or anything. Each pixel just has its own pixel. Um, it works out extremely well. I I still think you know between these two kits, the 9380 and the ITA, 9380 is still the better choice in my opinion for what I play. But between these two kits, ITA is the better one. The only pro between these two kits, I think, is that this screen has three different pixel grid emulation options. So we have the first option, which is off. Uh, it looks like it's using 2x integer scaling. Uh, oh, come on. Just barely missed it. Pixel grid. The first option is vertical lines only, second option is horizontal lines only, and third option is both. Um, it helps if I put them on the same screen, huh? Hmm. Honestly, they look pretty much the same to me. Like with the pixel grid scaling on, or pixel grid emulation on. The actual screen door effect on both looks effectively the same. I don't like what it's doing to the white levels, but I think that's just the color filter. Nope, that's just the screen. All right. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to I'm going to do a write up in the wiki that I maintain. I'm sorry this was such a long one. I need to organize my thoughts a little bit more and think about it. Um I'm going to go with like if you need something hard and fast and you don't want to go read the wiki even though reading the wiki will take like 3 minutes compared to this almost 2 hour long video. Um between these two kits, ITA all the way. Half the price. And while it does have fewer features on paper, unless you want to use those specific features, this does everything better implemented. This does what it does better implemented. <sighs> like even if we put Zayas on this thing, I think I've shown this off. I, I think I did this. This screen with this game. Come on. Yes, start. Did it freeze? That's bizarre. Well, I didn't even realize that I put the same lens on both of these. Game, yes. Start. There it goes. It did freeze. It's weird. So yeah, like I said on that artificial test I was looking at earlier, there is a little bit more flickering. But it's also not game-breaking flickering. Like, it's... I'm looking for it so I notice it flickering, but if you... If I didn't tell you about it, you would have literally never noticed the flickering. That's... That's what kind of flickering it is. Like when you walk into a department store and you notice their overhead fluorescent lighting is flickering just a little bit. Uh, and because someone in your party is sensitive and whining about it, it's all you can think about while you're there. Sorry, I'm not projecting again. Um, no, I'm kidding. That's literally never happened to me. I'm the one who notices it and whines about it. Um... I don't know. I'm gonna organize my thoughts better, put it in the wiki, uh, but gut feeling says it's not worth the price. It's It does a lot of things right, 
It does very few things wrong, and the things that are wrong have more to do with the vendor itself than the actual kit. But the price and the power consumption are just so very difficult to look past when the other alternatives do those two specific things so much better. Not just better, but like stupidly better. Yeah. I don't know, it's... I feel like I, I end a lot of these videos with a similar note, which is they did so much right, but they they fumbled it in the last few in the last minute or whatever that football expression. Sorry, I don't watch soccer. I don't keep up with sports. Um, last twenty yards, five yard. I don't know. It's that thing they they just got so close. All right. I think that's all I got. Um, I am going to echo the sentiment I mentioned at the beginning of the video, which is I genuinely thank you. It is astonishing to see so many people um, place their faith in me. Um, honestly, it feels a little undeserved and... I don't know, it, it, it's, it's kind of weird, but I guess that's, uh, what do they call it, imposter syndrome? I've, I've tried establishing my channel on being as, as honest as possible on this sort of stuff to provide documentation. I let politics get in the way every now and then. It is what it is, I'm sorry. And the fact that I'm calling it politics uh, drama. I let drama get in the way sometimes, and I'm, I'm sorry for that. Um, and I was gonna let drama dictate the fact that I shouldn't take a look at this kit. But I'm really glad I did, because now that I've taken a look at this kit, I feel better knowing that it still needs some improvement. Um, and not... Don't take this the wrong way. That is not because of how I feel about the creator. Actually, I think it is because of how I feel about the creator. I think because now that I know it needs some improvement, you know, I, I know versus the not knowing where if I hadn't looked at it and I'd just seen these features on paper, um, you know, it would have gnawed at the gnawed away at the back of my head, you know, it would have been something like, oh yeah, every time I do a backlight video from then on, I'd be thinking about it, like, oh man, I should look at that kit, because that kit has these features, blah, blah, blah. No. It's good. It is good. I will give it that. It is good. It could be better. And I think if you're looking for best value in a kit, this ain't it. But um, it does have those two specific features if you want them. I really like the idea of that color filter. And I really like the idea of that uh, motion filter. Of course, motion filter is not even necessary for this one. But it does mean the pixel response on some games is a little bit slower. But since every game designed for the Game Boy was working with that pixel response in mind, I can't think of a single game where having better pixel response would actually, ah, excuse me, would actually net you an advantage. So while it's a nice to have on paper and great for PC gaming type thing, does it even matter here? Um, yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm repeating at this point. I'm delirious and not because it's late, but because I've been doing this for two hours, plus the other videos I already made today. Surprise, surprise. Anyway, that's all I've got. Notes in the description, please click the link. Uh, I have started putting my site in the description instead of a bunch of helpful links that I usually put in there. Uh, reason being, if you click the site, everything is there and organized, and I call it a site, but really it's just a domain that I'm redirecting to a GitHub page. Um, so if you're security-minded and you look at that HTTP link and you go, hey, Mako, that's 
sketchy. Well, A, I'm not taking your payment information, so what does it matter? B, I'm not taking your credentials for it, literally anything, so also, what does it matter? Uh, and C, it does redirect to an HTTPS at the very least, so eh, we're kind of there in the end. Um, anyway, distracted. Links to the wiki that I maintain on all the backlight kits. I will add an entry for this kit. I will try and organize my thoughts a little bit more succinctly and coherently there. Uh, I will also record the numbers that I measured earlier in my spreadsheet for power usage, and then after this video, I'll go ahead and measure the brightness. I got a... Well, I'll probably do that later, but by the time this video goes up, it should be in the spreadsheet. Uh, I gotta kill all the extra lights in my apartment to avoid any light contamination um, because with clear shells and all these LEDs, it gets complicated. And I want to get the most accurate value I can. Uh, but anyway, I'll go ahead and throw that in the description. Uh, you just gotta click the site and then click the link there. It was, it was getting tedious to update, especially since every time I made an update, I'd have to go back and manually update all my videos. And if you've ever seen my roster, it's over 360 at this point. Or is it 260? It's a lot. Um, it's too many to manually update. So moving over to the site and then when I update that, it updates on every video it's linked on. So it's fantastic. Uh, anyway. This video was sponsored by absolutely no one in particular because I decided to try this kit out after all those kind words and bought one with my hard-earned cash. Um, yeah, I'll put a link in the description probably just because it's the right thing to do, but I don't recommend the kit and I certainly don't recommend that vendor. And uh, I've been Mako, thanks for being patient. I know this was a long one, and I'm going to cringe to heckin' back when I sit here and watch the premiere with you guys. But uh, I hope it was informative, I hope it was helpful, and if nothing else, I hope it was at least entertaining. And uh, until next time... Yeah, that's all I got. <laughs>